I greet you all in the name of Jesus. What do you say? Amen. Thank you so much for the children's story that was coming direct from the Word of God. And thank you so much for that item of music, so soft, but the words were very, very clear. Therefore, the message was clear. It's time to drink from the fountain of life. And this morning, we are asked to turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. And we are going to read verses 30 and 31. Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. And this is what the Bible says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. May God bless the reading of his holy scriptures. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we cannot open up your scriptures without the presence of your Holy Spirit and we cannot find suitable lessons and principles that we need to treasure without the Holy Spirit. So we pray that your Holy Spirit is going to illuminate our minds and help us understand what you are prepared for us this morning. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the sermon simply says, God requires four things. God requires four things. Or, the four things that God requires. The four things that God requires. So when we go back to the text... The Bible tells us that uh, there were some people like Sadducees who came to Jesus Christ and raised a question about a woman who was married to seven men and the question they were raising was who was going to be the husband in heaven? And uh, we see that Jesus Christ adequately answers that question that uh, in heaven there is no resurrection of those that are in marriage. So after that, the Pharisees also came in and raised the question, which is the greatest commandment? And so Jesus Christ draws from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 5 and these are the same words that are found in Mark chapter 12 verse 30 to 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as, your, as yourself. And there is no commandment greater than these. And uh, after that, the Pharisee commented, and Jesus Christ praised the Pharisee for having commented wisely. I have not invested much in verse 31, but I've invested much in uh, verse 30. <laughs> verse 30. And that's why we find, that's why we find the four things that God requires. The heart, the soul, the mind, 
and the strength. Now let's look at the construction of verse 30. Love the Lord your God. So the first word is a verb, which is an action word, meaning that love is never a theory. Love is always practical. Love the Lord your God, your master and your, your creator. So there is that word, your, which is a possessive pronoun. So this God belongs to us. And this is the God that we should love and possess at the same time. And with all your heart, not part of the heart, but all your heart. Your again is a possessive pronoun, meaning uh, my heart and your heart. No other person's heart, but your heart and my heart. And that word heart may not mean the heart that we study in biology. This is different from the one that we study in biology. And we shall hear very soon the details about this heart. And with all your soul. And with all your soul. So everybody has a soul. Everybody possesses the soul, and that's why there is that possessive pronoun, your soul. And with all your mind, and everybody has a mind. So we have got to love God with all our minds. And with all your strength, every one of us has the strength. So we have got to love the Lord with all our strength. Um, so these are the four requirements uh, that uh, Jesus is talking about. So Jesus Christ is also telling us that um, the whole of true religion is comprised in loving God and our neighbor. And the purpose is to possess God and enjoy his presence while this God is living in our hearts. And the one who loves God comes to completely rest in God and not any other thing apart from God himself. And when he has loved this God, he is fully satisfied that he has found the best thing that you can ever find in this world. Amen. And because he who loves is supremely, is supremely contented with God, there is nothing else that can disturb this contentment that is in this individual. And this contentment completely rest in this person and he is satisfied because he loves God and nobody else. And this love does not change. And the Bible says God does not change is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. So if this genuine love abides in us, then this love should not change. It should be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If it changes, then it is not genuine love. It is a gonger. It's not genuine love at all. So it always abides steadily attached to that which is loved. It cannot be separated. And that's why the Bible says, who can separate us from the love of God? So we can never be separated from the love of God because we are contented, we are satisfied in him. What is implied in loving God with all the heart? So mind and strength. 
and when may a man do this so the man should love God with all his heart there shouldn't be a percentage which is reserved for something else all the hundred percent should belong to God this love is hundred percent we should be given to God and nobody else and there is nobody else who can be compared with this God nobody else this is the only God that uh, we should have and one who loves nothing but in reference to him nothing else and this person is ready to give up anything for the sake of God there shouldn't be anything that should be reserved then that kind of love is not hundred percent everything should be given to God all right so when we go to Mark chapter 10 and, and, and this story is also found in Luke and Matthew where we find the young rich Lura coming to Jesus Christ running and addressing, addressing Jesus Christ good master what can I do for me to do what to inherit eternal life and when you turn to make Matthew I mean Mark chapter 10 verse uh, 17 you will find uh, what Jesus Christ is saying here so he says uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life and then Jesus Christ says why do you call me good Jesus answered none is good except God alone you know the commandments you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not give false testimony you shall not defraud honor teacher declared all these things I have kept since I was born just imagine since I was a boy and Jesus looked at him and loved him one thing you lack he said go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven then come and follow me and this man's life fell and this man's face fell he went away sad because he had great wealth so he declared that he loved the God with his whole heart and with everything that he had but when he was told go and sell what you have so that you can give to the poor so that those poor can be taken care of when he looked at his riches when he counted the, the dollars that he had when he counted the quarters and the run the runs that he had he saw that mm, all these I should surrender to this uh, dusted fit man no 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 I cannot do that so he went away from uh, the Savior and um, it was not true that he loved God with all his heart it was not true that he kept all the commandments it was not true that he had the spirit of caring for the poor and so he went away sadly because he was full I mean he was very very rich indeed so anybody who has a true genuine relationship with God and God asks him go and sell whatever you have money should not separate him from God property should never separate him from God he should surely faithfully and quickly surrender the money demonstrating that he has genuine love for the one who has commanded him but unfortunately he didn't have that kind of love but the one who truly loves God with the whole heart is more than ready to suffer anything in order to please and glorify God let's go to the next one how to love God with all your soul how to love God with all your soul now the soul is is the part of us that 
defines each one of us of who we are. It describes our character, it de describes our entire being. And this is where we make our decisions and make choices that ultimately uh, decide our lifestyle and behavior. Now, to love the Lord with all your soul means to love him in the way we live. How do we live? So, how we live sends a picture of the one I am in relationship with. How I live is to carry the message of Jesus Christ, is to carry the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Thus, loving God with all our souls. All our souls. And this is very, very difficult in our days. Very, very difficult in, day, in our days because you find people that come to church look like Christians, but then after they have left the church, they don't look like Christians anymore. It means they don't represent God. They don't love God with our whole soul. So, choices flow from what we treasure most. Whatever is very important in our lives, that's the thing that we, we treasure most. If, if we love God more than anything else, it will tell and it will show. Ask yourself, how do I spend my money? What do I do with my time? What kinds of things do I read? What programs do I watch? What do I do for entertainment? Where do I go for my relaxation? What things give comfort in difficult times? What kind of friends do I have? All these tell that if we answer these questions according to the expectations of heaven, then we love God with all our souls. Some people spend time on pornography. Some people spend time on useless things. And they spend very little time for God. Even today, we will see that there is a big number of people that have come to church, but after 14 hours, Seventh-day Adventists will disappear, and only very few will remain. Now, I cannot surmise, I cannot guess what goes on wherever they go, and so it will be very difficult for me to accuse them. Because they have no evidence of what they do after they leave the church. All these result in choices that demonstrate whether we love God with all our soul. So Jesus says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. So, but this love must be demonstrated. It is always practical. So when we keep the commandments of God, we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We are tangibly expressing our love for the Lord. That's what we do. Now let's look at the mind. How do you love God with all your mind? Now, the language of the mind is the language of images that are formed in our minds. In our minds. Okay? So, so in our minds, there are so many films that are inside our minds. Alright, so it depends on what you are focusing on, what you are thinking about, is what we come in the mind. 
so often our mind is an ongoing movie screen that provides pictures and words that are endless. So much of our life is lived in our minds because we can never turn our minds off. We can't. Even when we are sleeping, our minds are still active. One day I was assigned to go to one of the churches to go and preach and in that church the woman was a I mean the church clerk was a woman and we went into the vestry and joined our hands before we went to the pulpit the one who was next to me was the elder the first elder and the next one was the church clerk who was a woman and the next one was the interpreter and then it was me then the elder prayed while our hands were joined but while we were praying this elder was shivering as we were praying then I said okay we ended our prayer and I said if I begin discussing I will disturb the sermon so I went to preach and came back and we joined hands again in the same way we we joined our hands before and the same shivering took place so I was prompted to ask him a question my brother in the first place you were you were you were shivering and, and again you shivered what is your problem and then she said and then he said you know, each time I'm joined to this church clerk, there's something that moves my mind. So I shiver. <laughs> what was going on, on in his mind? In his mind, it was recording to him that I am joined to a female. And so there were some imaginations that were going on in his mind and that's why he was shivering so after that i told him i said my brother now you have to overcome this otherwise you'll be in trouble so after after a few years he divorced his wife and, and after that he married another one and another one and another one all these were divorced until he died he's buried in kalomo So we find ourselves constantly seeing, seeking images being played for us or holding a conversation in our mind, sometimes at all at the same time. But God created the mind so that we can be communing with God without uh, ending, with meditating upon the goodness of the Lord meditating upon the scriptures that's why the minds were given to us so that our minds could concentrate only on those things that are pure only on those things that are pure when our body sleeps our mind stays active dreaming even throughout the night so the minds are active always um, so when we are talking about the minds we are talking about reasoning we are talking about having knowledge we are talking about having memory and we are talking about having an imagination let me just say a few things briefly about uh, uh, the four things that i've just mentioned number one isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says come on now let us do what let us reason together so you cannot reason without the the mind you can only reason with with the mind the reason to reason is to think to understand and to form judgments by a process of logic all right so i believe that um, part of loving god with all our mind is loving him logi lo logistically logically not not logistically so faith in many ways goes beyond reason it looks to the impossible and it trusts in the all-knowing god 
starts about the mind. Now, let's go to the knowledge. To love God with all your mind involves taking time to fill our minds with God's way. There must be a true, genuine Christian who has a relationship with God must have a deliberate time to say this hour is for, for me and to, uh, and, and to study the word of God so that when you are fed with the word of God, the word of God instructs us, rebukes us, and also teaches us in righteousness. So when we concentrate on the word of God, we grow in our spirituality. We grow in the, in the love of, of the mind, in the love of the heart. We grow in everything. But if we do not drink from the fountain of, of, of life, then our spiritual status gets stunted. We become dwarfs spiritually. Because we are not drinking from the fountain of life. A true meaning Christian will have time, deliberate time, to study the scriptures. So that he or she can, can grow. And so because of that, we grow in truth and gain knowledge. And love itself includes great depths of knowledge. We have got to drink deeper. We have not studied the scriptures the way it is, it's supposed to be studied. We need to know him better. We need to grow in our Christianity. So, loving God is continually you know, refueled when the mind encounters truth over and over again. Talk about tithe. Some people find it very hard to retain tithes and offering. Up to today, our records show that out of over 1,000, only less than 200 people retain tithes and offering. Very few. But you look at their steps, they are serious. Look at their attitude, they are serious. They are coming to church. Every time they are there. But the true picture is found in our records that not many people participate in bringing tithes and offerings. So knowing truth and loving God are deeply connected because after all Jesus Christ, I mean the Bible says in John 14 verse 6 that uh, uh, Jesus is the way, the truth and the, and the life. So when we, we study the word of God, we are studying the character of Jesus Christ. We are studying the principles of Jesus Christ. That we should emulate the, the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Memories lead to gratefulness. Um, and worship. So, when we use our minds to remember his kindness, his faithfulness, his patience, his peace, and everything else, it helps us. When we recall all the good things that he has done to us, we appreciate God. We, 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 our, our relationship is deepened. Our relationship is, is improved between us and our God because we remember the good things here that he has done for us in the past. And all these things that we remember occur in the mind. They occur in the mind. And so because of the good things that God has done and we remember them, we build a strong foundation of faith, hope, and love at the same time. Don't allow your past to freeze you. Do not allow your past to freeze you. Why should we not uh, allow the past to freeze us? Because now we are with Jesus. It is this same Jesus who has forgiven us our sins. 
And according to First John chapter 1 verse 9, we have confessed our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanses us from all our sins. So in as far as heaven is concerned, we are pardoned. Whatever man can say about us, we are pardoned before heaven. Whatever man will, will, will criticize, we are pardoned by heaven. Whatever man will look at us with ridicule, we are pardoned by heaven. We are innocent before heaven. We are innocent before heaven. And after all, we sing the song, Jesus is the shelter in the times of storm. So who is the man to discourage you? Who is the man to take, you, to, take, to take you away from the Lord? Who is the man to disturb your relationship between you and your God? Who is man? Whatever rank, whatever experience that man might, might, might have, he can never be compared with the one who saved you. He can't. So when the, the devil reminds you of the past, remind him of the cross of Jesus Christ. When he reminds you of your sins, you, you remind him of the blood of Jesus Christ that was, that was shed on Calvary. Yes. So our Lord is wonderful. And this is the word that is uh, usually misused in many times. Let's go to the last one. How to love God with all your strength. Uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 18, the Bible says, Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. That's what the Bible says. So, um, strength is what we are talking about here. So the one who has strength, he sacrifices his time. The one who has strength also sacrifices his body. The one who has strength sacrifices also his health. There's a story written by a writer of a book called um, Incredible Power of, of Prayer. This same author was admitted in the hospital and he saw other patients so sick and about to die, he began to intercede on behalf of those patients and he saw them being discharged one by one. So the fact that you are not in good health at that time does not mean you cannot pray for other people. You can pray for other people as well. So this man employs all his talents, he employs all his power, he employs all his credit, he employs all his authority, and employs all his influence. He loves God with all his mind. And this man does not study art or science. Whatever he studies must be necessary for the service of God. He does not study anything just, just to please himself. He studies something to please God. Okay? So he eliminates from his understanding and memory everything that is useless. Everything that is foolish. A South African journalist went to, Su to Sudan where there was hunger, famine. And he went there and he found a boy about to die and a voucher was near. Waiting for the boy to do what? To die. And that's when now he, he, he took a photo of the child and, and the voucher and sent it to the whole world. And a fellow journalist praised him, you know, and uh, he was given a Nobel Prize and so on. But the rest of the world condemned him. Why? Because that child was dying. He had the money. He would have bought the food and he would have given this child who was about to die. All he was looking for was for the glory from the world, not to feed the one who was about to die. He was inhuman by doing that. And so he was foolish. And because he was criticized every day, every day, every day, he suffered from stress and he died. He died because he used those means foolishly. Instead of helping a human being, he decided to please the world. He who sees God in all things thinks of him all times. And because his mind is continually fixed upon God, 
He acknowledges him all the time and all his ways. He begins, continues, and he ends his thoughts, words, and works to the glory of his name. This is the person who loves God with all his heart, life, strength, and intellect. He is crucified to the world and the world to him. He lives not he, but Christ lives in him. He's the one who is leading his life. He beholds as in a glass the glory of the Lord. And is changed into the same image from glory to glory. Simply and constantly looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of his faith. He receives continual supplies of enlightening and sacrificing grace. And is often fitted for every good word and work. This is the person that loves God with his, with his whole heart, mind, no, 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 soul, mind, and strength. Now question yourself. Is this description fitting you and me? Tell. May God bless us. Amen.